Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. So much going on. On Patreon today we have our monthly very difficult cryptic crossword that's gone up. So if you're on Patreon you're interested in the cryptic crossword content, do check it out. We had to have we did have a few emails this month saying they wanted a bit more crossword content. Um and we do our best, but we are doing two Sudoku videos a day as well. So we need to keep them up and there's also Wordle and there'll be a Quordle going up tomorrow. So loads going on as always. Uh, Simon's Tapper Solve um, and on the channel and Thomas Snyder's on Patreon. Loads going on all the time on the channel. And you can check out the links for our apps and our merchandise and Discord all uh, Discord is a great place to go. A few constructors have been asking me recently where they can get um, advice and help and and uh, a review of their puzzle. Discord is definitely the place to go. Check it out. It's on a link in the description field. The first link is to this puzzle, which is called Spinning Antenna by Stephen. Uh, Stephen has sent us this. Uh, we've never featured him on the channel before. I don't know the extent to which that is his genuine name or a pseudonym, but the puzzle has been praised for its symmetry. And actually, I like its picture. Um, I did change the colors from how they were sent to us because I've got used now. Well, thermometers, I feel, should always be gray. And I'm used to palindromes being orange. Uh, Stephen had those reversed, but I think this probably is a bit clearer to people who've done our puzzles before and seen the colors that we tend to use. So the rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Cages show their sums. So those four digits add up to 10. Along gray thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb. Oops. So those digits will go up from there to the end. Orange lines are palindromes reading the same in both directions. So that digit's going to have to be the same as that, for instance. And that's it. That's all we get. And no given digits, two cages. That's mind blowing. I mean, and it is so symmetrical, isn't it? The palindromes are exactly the same. Obviously, this is high numbers and this is low. I suppose the thermos are pointing the same way rather than opposite ways, which in fact, in Sudoku terms, breaks up the symmetry, but it doesn't really break it up as, as artwork. I love it. I mean, it's a really, I'm intrigued that this solves uniquely. So we're going to find out how, I hope. Do try it on the link under the video. I am going to start now. Let's get cracking. And we know that a 10 cage, the four minimum digits in a Sudoku are 1, 2, 3, 4. They add up to 10. The four highest digits are 9, 8, 7, 6, and they add up to 30. So we can fill those sets in straight away. And I mean, we could then... On this thermometer, uh, sorry, on this palindrome, we could put one, two, three, four there. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to color. Uh, let's go blue for low. And um, purple for high. No, blue and purple are too close. Green for high. Um, I'm not using orange in case that messes with the orange palindromes. I would normally have used orange for high. But this is interesting because what I've just seen is that these two digits, where do they appear in box four? Well, they can't be here because they're not, those ones aren't six, seven, eight, nine. Those two digits also can't be there. So they must both be here. And the same is going to be true for those two over here. They must go down here. Now let's fill in colors on the palindrome. And what I'm trying to do is keep green as six, seven, eight, nine, and blue as one, two, three, four. And then we'll see where we get to doing that. Um, these are all blue. That one we don't know. This one is green. Okay, so we've got that pattern now. I do feel this might unfold in patterns. Um, Now, have we built up any fours? Now, if I can keep going like this, and I might make... Oh, I don't know, the, the colours are annoying. What what does it look like if I make green into red? Oh, that looks all right. Okay, so I'm going to make blue low, red high, and yellow 
for the number in between, the 5. And now obviously there's going to be a 5 in those three cells. I wonder if the symmetry of this puzzle will dictate that it's in the middle. I don't know. Now, there are, what I was going to explain is there are only going to be four blues and four reds in each row, column and box. But have we learnt anything about where those go yet? This group is going to be one blue, one red and one yellow. Um, I'm not going to mark that. Ah, right, this is interesting. Oh, this feels impossible suddenly. What are these three colours? I've done something wrong. Right, I've coloured that cell wrongly, so I apologise. I thought that was on the palindrome, but that was making things impossible. And I have no right to colour that red. OK, this now the colouring exactly matches symmetrically, so it's correct. Sorry about that, I shouldn't have coloured that red. And the reason I didn't like that impossibility was because I couldn't suddenly make up these three digits. Obviously one of them is yellow, but the other two have to both be red and that's going to use up all the reds for the row. And the yellows, obviously, because there's only one yellow. So these three are all blue. Okay, the other way to see that is we've had one blue in the row Obviously, these four blues mean none of these can be blue, so the other three blues are there. So I, these three are all red for the same reason over here. These can't be red, and we need three reds in row four. Ah, oh, bingo. Yes, of course. This is six, seven, eight, nine, but it is the bulb of a thermometer, which has to increase all the way up. So now we get digits. I've been wondering how we will ever disambiguate digits, and now we know. So if it's six on the bulb of, the, of a four cell thermometer, the others are seven, eight, nine, we can color those in. Now these can't be sevens, these can't be eights. Um, this one too is now high, so seven or eight. This must be high now, so this one has gone red. Um, eight or nine, that's fine. Now, I suppose I'd better keep the symmetry up. So if we could do that, yes, look, this one, this one is low, but is the highest of four digits. So they've all got to be low too. Um, and therefore we go one, two, three, four. And now I'm even more certain than ever that this central cell will be a five to keep the progression up the diagonal, but I haven't proved it yet. So although I'm morally certain it is, I'm not going to fill it in. Now, this has become three or two. So this is one or two and is blue. Um, I don't know why I've written a zero in there. That was a mistake. Now, right, these can't be three and these can't be two. So we've got an awful lot of cells filled in on palindromes for colors. Now, what about these two? This one sees three blues in the column and the box. I don't know. It's not. It's the same as this, which also sees three blues. And this one sees a three and this one sees a four. But it could be a double one or a double two. I can't see why it couldn't actually be a double two. Ah, because these have to include a 2. So, if it's low, it's a 1. But it might alternatively be high, in which case it's 7 or 6, or it could be 5. And I'm a bit stuck there, so that probably wasn't where to look. Now, this has to be 2, 3 or 4 because of the 1 in the corner. And that is the same as over here. So that's 2, 3 or 4. These are from one, two, three in a row with a four. So are those. Ah, but these two have to be the same. So that's not a three and that's not a four. This has to be the same as this. So that's not a two and that's not a four. Um, hmm. Now we need to find some other samey somewhere. I don't quite know where. Okay, I need to think about this a bit more. Or may I I presume if I just work on the low digits, 
I'll get the same result as if I just work on the high digits. I think the symmetry mandates that. I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay, but anyway, let's put in 6, 8, 9 there. This is 6, 8 or 9, but it can't be 6 that end. So 8 or 9. And this is 6, 7 or 9, but it can't be 6 on the left side. So they're down to two possibilities each. This is obviously 7, 8 or 9. This one is 6, 7 or 8. Ah, but it can't be 6 because 6 has to be in one of these two cells. And it's the same. And it this digit and that digit are the same. So they are 7 and 8. Well, 7 and 8 are the candidates for that uh, cell, both ends of its palindrome. This column needs another blue, another red, another yellow. Ah, these are two reds and two yellows. Ah, okay, that's interesting, because these two can't both be the reds. If they were, these two would both be red, and we'd have five red in box eight. So one of these is yellow. That is a red-yellow pair, and this is red. And this is now a red-yellow pair. Oh, and that's used up all the reds and yellows for the box, so these are all blue. Right, we must be able to do the same up here. These three include two blue and a yellow, but these two can't both be blue. So we've got a blue-yellow pair there, that's blue, and now all of these are red, yes. Right, so we know this isn't a 1 or a 5, it's red. So it's 6 or 7, and that's red too. This is blue. We must be able to work out that these are 3 or 4. How do we do that? Um, I don't know yet. Oh, this is 2 or 3, because it sees a 4 and a 1. There must be a 1 there. That's interesting. There must be a 1 in those two, so there must be a 1 in these two. And now I can take 1 out of these two cells as a possibility. So that's a 3, 2, 4, triple. 1 in the middle row is in one of those, and this isn't a 1. Now I've got a 2, 3 pair here, and this is a 1. Intriguing. Okay. Um... Now, I thought I was going to work out what... The, the, narrow this down to two cells, but I haven't actually done that. This is two or four. Oh, nine. Look, nine has to be in that cell. So this is a six, seven, eight triple. In fact, that's a seven, eight pair. Neither can be six because of the six there looking at that cell and the six there. So this is a six. Oh, now we're getting digits. Okay. Um, Maybe not many. We get a six in one of those two. Six there. One of these two is a six. I don't know which is the five, though, do I? Um, ah, six down in this box is actually fixed now. It's got to be here and therefore there on the palindrome. And this one is not a six. That's a seven, nine pair. So this is eight. I must be able to replicate this if I want to in the blue cells in a moment. That gets me seven and eight. That's on the palindrome, so eight there. Um, this has become a nine. That's on a palindrome, so that finishes off the cage. This is a very neat puzzle, isn't it? Really clever. This is now a five, seven pair. So we know where six goes in this box and we know that this can't be a 7. So that's a 9. Well, this must be a 7 now. We get 8 on the bulb. That puts 9 on the end of the thermo. And I've got nearly everything red. Well, everything red that I've coloured already. I've got marked up. Now we know where 9 goes in the middle as well. That's there. Um, and we're a step nearer proving this is a 5. Now, shall I... I probably it is time to try and replicate all those moves in blue. So one there is looking at those three cells. So this is where one goes. Now, how did we then work it? This is two, three or four. That's not the next thing. What is the next thing? One in the central box. I can do that. I hadn't really used that last time. But that has finally proved five as expected. And look at that lovely diagonal up there. One, two, three, four, five. 
six, seven, eight, nine. Now, one, one of these is a one. Yeah, we knew that because one of those was a one. Uh, this includes five and two, three, or four. This isn't how I did it. How did I do it in the red? What, what was the equivalent move that I achieved at this point to start unlocking all the red positions? Let's hope it wasn't an error. We never know. Um, four is in one of those positions. That's interesting. So that can't be a four. Yes, this, this is reminiscent of what I did at the top. So two, three pair here, we get a four on this palindrome. Now that has to be, well, we know where four goes in this box. It's there, so we can fill that in. That makes this a three. It unlocks that whole cage. Surely that's going to do a ton of damage. This becomes a two. That makes this a three. That fixes, oh, well, the palindrome's also fixed one and two there. This is now a three, five pair, and that's not resolved, but it does resolve this as a two on a thermo tip so that becomes a one this is now a four and there we go we've we've done the symmetry everywhere so let's do some pencil marking we get a seven in one of those cells our oh, eight is actually placed let's uh, color it oh okay so reds are confined to there so if i knew oh, i don't know where you, these are all blue or yellow but Maybe I can't use that yet. Um, okay, down the bottom we get a two here by Sudoku entirely. We get a one in one of these two positions. Also four, actually one and four are a pair up here. Ah, oh, that's very helpful. In fact, that must be where the one goes because it sees a four. So those are both blue. That's pushed six over here and that finishes the reds for the box. We get a six down here somewhere. This is three or five in the row. This is three or five, and that's a pair. So this must be a two. That's very useful. So that's blue. Three. This is a four, seven pair now, which is a, a blue red pair. Uh, let's not mark them. I don't know how it works yet. So this is three or five. That's a pair in the column. So this is a nine. I know the color for nine. Um, we get a nine here as well. We might have finished with nines by now. No, oh, it won't. Oh, I need to be on that to make it light up just the nines. Yes, that works. Now, what else is fair? I think we are very much on the home straight. This is a naked single. It sees six, eight, seven, four, nine in the row. One, three, two in the column. So that's a five. That's going to fix all our three fives in the top half at least. Um, in fact, that's the only place we've got three fives. So that is perfect. Uh, we've got a one, two pair in the top row that we can fill in. Still can't do the four, seven. Yes, I can now because I've suddenly done the seven, five pair and that resolves it. So we are very, very close to finishing now. Let's keep the coloring going because I know some people are very completionist in that way. We get four, five, wrong colors, um, four, five here. So actually I could color them red and yellow. There we go, five, four, seven over this side, three, eight pair, and we are finishing off. And what a brilliant puzzle. Now, the one mystery, I, I think I understand what, what it's about. Let me just color in all of these before I put the last digit in. Those are red. That's blue. Now, the mystery I'm talking about is in the title. Oh, those are yellow, but of course, oops, threes and sevens are not yellow. Fives are not red or blue. So I think that is the fully colored grid and the last digit goes. How can the last digit be a seven? Because I've colored that wrong. Let's try that that way round. I think that's better. I hope that was the only mistake. Just quickly checking for blues in every box now. Yes, seven there and we are finished. Um, and it's a lovely puzzle. Now, what is the 10 bolded or capitalized for in the spinning antenna? Uh, and I think that is because we've ended up with a, one of these grids with rotational symmetry adding to 10 everywhere. 
So every position in the grid, if you take the number there and you look at its rotationally 180 degrees opposite partner, they're going to add to 10 together. 2 and 8 is 10, 5 and 5 is 10, 1 and 9 is 10, 6 and 4 is 10, 8 and 2. So that makes, well, it sort of makes compiling the puzzle easier, but it also makes, you could use it if you spotted it while solving, if you were confident enough that it wouldn't get disrupted somewhere. And I think this grid was so tightly constructed and the symmetry was so perfect that you could be fairly sure early on that that wouldn't get disrupted if you noticed it. I didn't particularly notice it, but I did notice I was getting exactly the same patterns in the high numbers and the low numbers, which is another corollary of the same premise, I think. So there we go. That is a beautiful puzzle by Stephen. Thank you so much for sending that to us. Spinning antenna. Um, maybe support Simon's thesis that a five in the middle is a mark of a likely beautiful puzzle or a, maybe that a light that a beautiful puzzle often has a five in the middle that's the way to put it this one didn't have a three in the corner of course but uh, thank you for watching as always and very much hope to see you on the channel again soon bye for now